gather all the talents in New York City to help other people to grow the skill. So, Can you please project your voice a bit? I'm saying I have a meetup called NYC Open Data. I have been offering events for the past whole year. 81 events. Today we got 1,800 members in a year. So yeah. that's good. Wow. If you have expertise, welcome you to teach with me so everyone can learn. Usually I, I host events Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And most importantly, I, I spend a lot of time to make everything reusable. So like I taught how you can analyze city bike data set. You can click and see my slides right here. Like how you can predict how much city bike, like where you should uh, borrow the bike and where you can return it back. And I also record my desktop. So if you go back, go back, go back. It involving the modeling, how you can script data from a website, how you can set cron job so you can script the data all the time. I also record my desktop. You can follow along and learn on by, by yourself. So this is great resources. The website is nycdatascience.com. Click on Meetup. You can find a lot of great learning stuff. All the slides, source code, and desktop recording, video camera recording is here. And we just have a one year anniversary party. Mm -hmm. yes. You didn't invite us. What? <laughs> 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 so like, I invite people who write about open data, open data 500 to talk about how people really make money by the open data. And how you can do this regions, tons of events. I highly recommend you to sign up for my meetup and learn by my website. Cool. So today we're gonna talk about how we can get you hands dirty on their actual work. So um, the website is nycopendata.com. You can type our workshop one. So I'm gonna cover, let me try. Usually this workshop is one hour long. I will try to finish it in 20 minutes. First, yeah. how many of you have tried Open Data Portal? Oh, okay, <laughs> you're an expert. So if you search for NYC, let me record so you can use it later. Uh, screen recording. New York Open Data. Um, the first link is the Kratos site. If you click on that, I'm going to demonstrate 311. So if you type 311 here, put enter, uh, click on the yellow sign, NYC 311. You can go to the huge Excel sheet look downloading windows. It's big, it usually takes at least five minutes to five minutes to download. So you can click on filter and set a condition such as I only want all the 311 call created on after June 1st. So you get much smaller data set. I have a like question. I can set here. Can you programmatically filter and sort of grab data from NYC Open Data? I haven't seen anything about this, nor have I asked anyone on the internet, but I'm curious. Yes, and we have done events on this. How okay. you can scrape data from 100 different open data portals. Oh, great. So you just have, you expose APIs directly? Yes. Okay. Looking to the past event. Okay, sure. Okay, cool. Um, so you can, like, I can click on here. Go to filter first. Click on some condition. Like, I'm going to click on create day. The condition is, is after a certain day. So you can put multiple condition is after today oh okay let's do june 1st so we can have super small one right now we have you can click on the blue button export pick what kind of format you like such as csv json file usually csv is the most handy one so click there you can download your data set it's right here. And next, this is how you actually get the data. If you want to look into restaurant, 
uh, inspection data, you can search for a restaurant. So my students have done a lot of work on the NYC data open open portal. So you can find out one post on analyze NYC sanity data set using R. Like what are the rankings for the restaurant? Like exactly the R code, how you can grab the data from the website. How to clean it up. Because when people put the data set, it's not actually in the right format or the range is wrong. You need to do cleaning and figure out what's what's going on there. Um, this you can generate what cloud, like what kind of problem with them with the reading data. Another student used the NYC restaurant inspection data, but he used a different she, she used a different way. She wants to see where are the food food map are. Like where can I find Italian food? This is Chinese restaurant across New York New York. It's everywhere. <laughs> this is an American restaurant. Like Midtown, downtown, more American, French, French restaurant, pizza everywhere. So you can find a lot of things. They tell you what kind of cuisine they pr provide. And the code is super easy. You just use ggmap, and all the code is here. Okay, so I want you to do some experimental with data. So let's go through how to do it, actually. This is R Studio. It's an interface wrapper out of R. R is the most trendy um, tools these days. If you search R, most paid skill, you can find the article. You get paid more than Hadoop engineer. So I highly recommend you to study R if you can find some time. Um, I guess I won't cover the specific feature of R Studio today, but uh, you can find my previous recording, like how you can use those windows and how can those features help help you get up to speed. So let's look at some code. First, you only need to know about ten lines of code in order to plug three one one data today. So I won't usually when I teach, I don't give you exactly code. I give you something similar to that, different data set so you can pick up the skill by changing the parameters, changing the dataset name. So here I'm using a dataset called Diamonds, which have 15,000 records about price, clarity, uh, purity, cut, different, different type of criteria related to price. So naturally you want to know how can I predict the price based on what kind of diamond it is. So the way you, you need to load a package called ggplot2. So if you use RStudio, if you, it's your first time to use it, you can click on package and oops, it's done. You can click on package, click on install package and do ggplot2 and the, the software will download for you. And you need to do like little check mark here make sure it load to your memory. <clears throat> That's how you actually, um, like I can check here, car. So I have the package working. You can see, once you do the check action, correspondingly, you can see a function running here. This is the console part, showing you what actually has been run. Okay, this is about the first line of code. Install the package, load package. You can in, you can install a lot of package. As long as you didn't load them, they're not in your memory. Next step is pad diamonds. Diamond has 15,000 record. If you print the whole data set, you're gonna overwhelm yourself. So what pad function do is it give you the first six row of the record. So you have idea what's going on. So we have carrot, cut, color, clarity, depth, table, price, x, y, z. Okay, next one. If we want to take some column out, because when you deal, deal with 311 data set, you can tell it's a super long Excel sheet. You can keep scroll, 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 
more than 20 columns. So you want to pick the columns that matters to you. So here I'm showing you, you can take specific column and row out by using negative sign. So if we go back to the previous slides, we have carrot cut. notice the row number starts from 2, which means we're taking out the first row out. So if you want to take the last column out, that would be... Okay. The f yes. Yeah, you just answered the question. Yes. That's good. <laughs> so next page is taking the first column out. So the current column is gone. That's how you actually step step. Um, this is one way. Use, use numbers. Use negative one to take one or two column, but if you have a super long sheet, you want to say, I want first column, third column, just specific columns. So next page is about how you can do that. Here I'm choosing the first two row. The, pos the position is separate by comma sign. Before comma is the row number, after comma is the column number. So the C function tells this, I want the first row and second row. If you don't wrap it in C, it's hard to tell this number is for row or column. That's why this part is a little bit different. Everyone have been following so far? Question? Okay. Cool. So it's gonna be tedious if you have to type all the names. I just wanna clarify something. Yeah, so sure. it's um, positive numbers to select specific columns, negative numbers to Take remove. it off. Okay, I yeah, got it. Okay. It's negative is minus. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you don't want to type the name, we have a function called names. You can take each column. Like 311 column name is really long. Like agent description, you don't want to type them. You can do names. This become a new vector, like available for you. Okay, so we, we can also say true, false, true, false, true, false to, this, to say which column we want. So correspondingly, we are we were we are putting this C function, the C function after comma, we're specifying columns. We have three true here. That's why we only have three columns. Make uh, sense? Okay. I have a question. Why you need to put the uh, comma on the first one? Oh, because you notice here, the previous one, one the very first one. The comma saying, this is the row number I want to specify. After comma is the column number. If you don't want to specify column number, just leave it space there. Are you recording me? Awesome. I always <laughs> record myself. <laughs> <laughs> not for showing, it's for you guys so you can learn it. I'm not wasting my e e effort. We can keep reusing it. Okay. So you can also say, I want carrot column by using a dollar sign and do a header it will print the first six number of this column you can also say I want to print the maximum price diamonds record remember we use true and false to specify which column and which row we want so spec if this one how much is this it's this much, 18, 18, 18,000, around 18,000. You first select what's the price for the, for the maximum, so it becomes 18,000 here. We can plug in. This one, we're getting the whole price column. We want to match it to the um, maximum. We will get a vector, have true, false, true, false, true, false. The true is the one have the maximum price. We might have multiple records, but it doesn't matter. Because we're saying, please print out those records which price equal to the maximum. So this becomes a true false vector. We apply it to the row position. That's why we can get this record out right away. Did you see the logic? Mm -hmm. So everything is like built on previous slides. Okay, so, so in, a, in some way, if you leave it blank, like comma blank blank, means you want everything. Integer plus means you want to include the record. Negative means you want to exclude it. You can use logic. Two will be 
display. You can use dollar sign with the common name to print the vector. Cool. Any question before we move on? Okay, so R have different data structure. I just want to like briefly cover what they are. Like one row of numbers, it's the basic union in R, it's called vector. If it's two dimension, like the diamond one, it could be matrix. And if multiple, like we have three times three times three, it could be array. It's just how we name it. If you have, like, they have to be the same type, either letters, numerical, or logic. If you have mixture type, like the diamond one, like it will be data frame. Mm -hmm. Different type, same type, you will have different types. Is there an efficiency gain for using vectors over data frames in R? So if you want to process like a ton of records, you would probably do some like selection thing where you're just dealing with like a specific uh, row and load it into a vector. What do you mean by selection? So like, okay, um, before on the earlier side, you showed um, like the price, like you're just getting the prices, right, um, for like uh, your data frame. If you get that entire like feature, so mm -hmm. like let's say you want all the prices and then you're comparing against some other thing, then that would be the type of transformation I was referring to. Oh, this one. Yeah. Well, no, no not necessarily that. I was just saying, Similar to this one. I was saying like um, diamonds, no, so you would just, do, it would just be diamonds dollar sign price mm -hmm. because it's, it's the only, would that be, and that, that would be, and then you would save that to a vector and then do all the processing that if you want an efficiency gain. That's all I'm saying. Um, you, need, you can do a system time wrapper to calculate how long it takes you to finish this step. So well, you can for choose sure. which one is faster. Right, right. So I, I guess my point is that there should be an efficiency game if you're using a vector when it, over, over a data frame based on what you said, right? No. No? Because, Not necessarily? Because vector is, you have multiple vectors, it becomes a data frame. So each individual No, sorry. So I'm saying, I'm saying like... A, you're loading it as a vector. Okay, this is probably, it, yeah, 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 please, sorry. <laughs> yes, don't worry, but okay. we're not at that stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, if you want to study like the rodent data, you can go to 311 and go to a filter and choose complaint type, complaint type. It is or contains rodent. Here you pick, the first is the column you're picking, this is how do you compare. I can say complaint type contains rodent. And you can fill out all the record have rodent complaint, like rodent sightseeing. Does it take a really good expression? No, it doesn't. You should complain to Socrata. <laughs> <laughs> they get paid well, they should do more. Okay, so once you download the rodent data, you can use two functions to load it into your R. You can use read CSV, <coughs> it's the your reading CSV file. This is the part you actually put the file name. For Mac machine, you just do um, Calta to show it's your root, root direction. This is for Windows machine. And you want to say whether this table come, come with a column name. That's the header equal to true for. Separator is how each column separates them by the delimiter. So you specify the location, the header, and the separator. So this data set will load into the data object. You give any name. You can say this is data set A. I'm using more than one year data. I try to use the name to explain what's this data set for. Um, you can do dimension, DIM. It's the shortcut for dimension. See how big the file is how many rows times how many columns. Then you can do a summary. Summary tells you the quantile, like 20% quantile, median, 75%, and what's the maximum. So each column, each column, it will give you the range of the data. And the table will do the same thing, but you can specify which one, which column you're looking at to, to get the summary statistic. Okay, so, um, Today we want to see how we can visualize the data. So this is typical way to visualize things. You can do x equal to carrot, y equal to price. You can see the basic trend. You can do colorful version. Like 
you can say, I want to add one more layer. I want the cut information. I think better cut will cost me more. So this is complete function. You can print out a nice visualization like this in R. The main function is called ggplot. It's, it's stop here. It's parenthesis, ggplot parenthesis here. The first is the data set name. We use diamonds, remember? Second part, you wrap it in AES. You tell what is the x, x equal to carrot. What is the y, it's equal to price. And you are coloring them by cut. Those three columns has, has to be data column inside of the data set. So we have seen diamond have carrot, price, and the cut, right? So for 311, you can say, I want this be longitude, this be long, longitude or latitude. So it can actually print the New York City map for you if you actually plot all the complaint. Because everywhere, people is complaining. You can <laughs> plot the whole map. And you can color them by like months, like which months, like summer, we have more complaint. Right? You can do a lot of things. Just use this function. Oh, and you have choices to either plot point or line. Here I'm saying plus line. It's like Photoshop. We do we do visualization layer by layer. The very first row is the data layer. We're telling the driver what is X, what is Y, what is the color. And we need to tell the driver what we are printing. It can be point, it can be line. So you just change G-E-O-M line, G-E-O-M point, right? Can you do higher than two dimensions? Yes, easily. <laughs> okay, so once you have this plot, if you like sensitive to the shape, it might trigger you to explore other a uh, mass relationship between those two columns. So I did a log, I did log carrot and log price. Mm -hmm. It looks like so it's much linear, oh. so I can predict price very easily. Nice. For any carrot around one, the price should be in this range with this cut information. The rest part stay the same. We, I'm just changing x and y to log, log scale. Okay, so what if we want to know more? Can we print more at the same time? You can tell, right now I, I'm printing all the combination between cut and purity, right? Like D, L1, how does that work? So the main part stay the same, we feed the data layer. What is the X, what is the Y, what is the color? We say we want a point. Last thing, we want to separate them out by clarity and color. So each combination will be printed here. We have how many layers cut? We have seven cut, six, seven clarity. We can generate 49 plot at the same time. So which, which one costs you more? Which, which cell? Mm -hmm. VS2. VS2. How do we read this? You should read either by column or by row because once you read them by fixing one dimension, only the other one is changing, right? If we read this part, this cell have a steeper slope, which means the price grow faster than this cell. So we know this is more expensive one. How about this part? Which one have the Bigger or slow. So we know this is the most expensive color, huh. right? It's it's you need to like come across line by line, column by column to really see which how the trend move along. Actually, can it print the the slope value that is computed? Yeah, you can print that. Yeah. You can do everything you want. <laughs> okay, so I want to see more. Like because I transpose it to the uh, transform it to the log scale. I'm putting it back, see how it grows. Here you can see 
Wow, this is so expensive. Like, grows up dramatically. Right. And how does that work? We just change here and here. Log sign back to the normal scale. Okay, so I just tried to explain how you do visualization. You should change one thing at, at each step. So if we look back how I do my plot, I first do a very basic one, x, y, black, uh, black, white scale. And I add a layer of cut, I add a color on, and I transpose it to log scale. And I separate them into different combinations. And I trans back, transpose this back to the normal scale. So each step, I'm only doing one thing. If you add so many things there, you will lose track how you can find the best way to visualize your data. So do it slowly. Okay, next one. And it's most important thing you want to, the reason you want to do visualization, you want to gain some, you want to have some knowledge from the data set. So analyze along the way, like why I choose log scale. Because I think that might give me a better idea how they, how I can project the price. Why I'm adding cut? Because I can, I'm thinking cut is the most important factor other than carrot. And I want to see how cut influence the price. So how, how many dimension data we're, we're showing here? Cool. We have carrot, price, cut, cut. clarity, and oh. color. color. Five dimension in two dimension space. Is this cool? Mm -hmm. Guys, let's go! Yes, R! Thank you so much! Okay, so if you find out, oh, actually the color doesn't matter much, you can just do clarity uh, facet. You can multiple things, make it really, really make sense and before you present the result to other people. So when we have the carrot and the clarity, it showed very, very strong trend what's going on. If you do this for, this, for 311, you can like separate by rural. Like Queens might have different trend than Brooklyn. Manhattan have different trend. What does the dot mean after the tilde in facet grid? That means I'm not putting anything there. I okay. just put a placeholder. I see. So that's just like by you because of the way it is. You have to do tilde, whatever, even yes. if it's just feature recognition. Because this is like left side, top, and the right side. Okay. You won't separate them. Got it. Okay. Okay. So those are my tips. Hope you can apply it to the um, 311 data. Also. If you are math savvy or statistics savvy, you want to do a regression line, that this, but this won't be covered here. Also, you can do a lot of amazing work by R. Like this is the uh, work made by New York Times. 512 mm. past two presidency. Mm. So basically how it works is you can choose, oh, if o Ohio is voting for a Democrat, oh, Democrat. What is the proportion? How they can win the overall campaign? What well, if Colorado is voting for Democrat? So, if you have to bet money on this, you know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> it, you can generate dyna dynamically based on your choices. I'll bet money. I know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely help you. Uh, you can do the same thing, like. Branch out the decision tree based on the probability. Are they using R in JavaScript or is that just all native R, like for the biz? Okay, I have taught how to do this by R charts. Like, go here, yeah. meet up, go to R charts. R charts is the package bridging, bridging R and D3JS. So oh, you okay. don't really need to learn D3JS. What? What? Alright, that's pretty nuts. And you say no R? Come on, you need to study more. Yeah. So here is I, know, I know how to use R for machine learning things, but not. I use 
just JavaScript for... Cool, so <laughs> you, can, you can choose different map and let me show you examples. Um, Not my main language. So this is the uh, source code. You can create eight visualization by R charts. This is made by our main partner in the firm, Professor Ramnash. He's a professor at uh, University of McGill. So, so you can do dynamic plotting. You can actually click on the points, see what are the numbers are. You can filter on the fly. You can generate different types of maps and put cute kitties on your maps. You can draw like really fancy visualization. Mm. Okay, so why do we use R? Like there are so many different tools. You might be Python savvy or C savvy. Um, this example given by Dirk, he he is a trader in Chicago, like commodity trader. So he showed an example. Here is. Um, can you guess what is Facebook for? Does this give you any hints? What's this data set? Marriage? Divorce rate. Uh, Facebook and eruption. Oh, so this is probably... Um, Game of Stone. Yeah. That's right. You want to tell a kid, oh, let's wait. It's gonna happen in 10 seconds. Let's come. And your kids will think, oh, you know, are you, you know magic. But actually, it's all come from statistics. You have all the past history. They're confident bond. And this is the code. You will do this experiment 10,000 times by place equal to two. You can actually generate the confident bond. So you know exactly based on the past 100 year history what will happen next moment. If you do this in other languages, it's, it's going to be like hundreds hundreds lines of code in order to re re uh, replicate this this experiment again and again. R is really the day R was born it's designed for data analytic purpose. Is R also used for text mining? Or of course. I think I have data mine a uh, text mining uh, event next month. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I recommend your book, a few books. The first one is called R in That Shell. It's written by the scientists at Twitter. And the art of R programming, Chichi Pala 2. And you should be good to go.